Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. This evening, we bring you Season 3, Episode 9, Into the Night, the season finale. Let's meet our finale vampires. Hi, I'm Josephine, and I play Eva. My name is Alex Ward, and I play Jasper. Hi, I'm Cynthia Marie, and I play Nellie G. I'm B.D. Walters, I play Victor Temple, and I'm not worried about any of this. I'm Jason Carl, you're a storyteller, and I'm worried for them all. We send our best wishes and our love to Erica Ishi, who couldn't be with us tonight. The dark scheduling gods have not favored us once again, it seems. And this happens sometimes during convention season. It's the price we pay for having such an awesome and successful cast. But we look forward to continuing Annabelle's story as soon as Erica rejoins us. I can hear you asking, what about season four? <laughs> well, Vamily, it's too <laughs> early to give you precise information just yet. But please keep your social media active. And stay alert for a special message, perhaps from Archangel herself, when we are ready to share that secret with you, of course. But until then, you can look forward to epilogues. For those of you who are just joining the family recently, our epilogues are one-hour mini-stories featuring many of our ensemble cast. These stories will begin in early August. Now, normally we have four epilogues following each season, but thanks to the very generous sponsorship of Backblaze, this season we have six. That's right, six epilogues. Thank you very much, Backblaze. Family, show them some love at mm -hmm. backblaze.com slash LA by night. Uh, speaking of special thanks, tonight's episode is sponsored by Level Up Dice, makers of amazing luxury dice products created from the most sought-after materials in the world. Visit their website at levelupdice.net to behold their beautiful creations. For those of you who are at Gen Con next week, you'll be among the first in the world to see the Level Up Vampire the Masquerade Special Luxury Dice, coming to you at Gen Con for the very, very first time. There's a set for every clan, and we look forward to showing these to you very, very soon, right here on LA by Night. <laughs> now we all know that the world of darkness is a world of secrets. And we know that these secrets have a way of getting out and we know that sometimes that is unplanned. And we know that sometimes it is very deliberate. Welcome, loyal listeners, wherever and whatever you may be. We've got good news tonight from the secret midnight world of Los Angeles, and who better to bring it to you but your old pal, Archangel. Here's the truth I have to share. I'm happy to say a group of like-minded kindred managed to pull old Jasper from the jaws of a final death. It was a dangerous affair in the hills above Hollywood, and things got a little too hot for more than a few licks. Of course, the mortal media is reporting it as a movie stunt gone wrong. Mortals are so gullible, aren't they? Next, it seems this little war of ages is moving underground. Literally. As the ivory tower has recent intel on a power source underneath the city that they just have to get their claws on. Shame a certain quartet of tryhards that seem to get themselves involved in everything are already there. This little valley family can't catch a break, but neither can the tower. In the daylight, the drama in Los Angeles is confined to film sets and streaming internet TV shows. At night, however, it's Cold Wars hot wars, masquerades, and revolutions. All these factions just trying to make a home in our city. 
my city. And I hope they find it soon, because their squabbles for power and territory threaten to put us all in peril. Find me sweet and soon for more truth spoken for those who will listen. Until then, I'm your guardian archangel, broadcasting from the center of it all and wishing you were here. Secrets, indeed. As a mortal, the first inkling you have about the true nature of this world of darkness is when you start to grasp that not everything is as you believed it was. There is always more to every story. Not only secrets, but secrets within secrets. And sometimes it is almost impossible to know the truth until it is too late. So with that very firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story. To many mortal visitors, the city of Los Angeles in the daytime can seem somewhat disappointing. Hollywood Boulevard isn't nearly so dilapidated on television. The famous Chinese theater is under a mall. The highways are choked with oversized fume belching vehicles and the sprawling urban jungle is a study in wild contrasts. A visitor can pass from the gleaming towers of downtown to bleak neighborhoods in just a few city blocks. But it's all under lively palm trees and lovely sunshine until the sun goes down. And then the true Los Angeles appears, resplendent in its neon burnished darkness. We are at Club Maharani in North Hollywood, the heart of LA's revitalized arts district. The club's brightly lit marquee shines like a beacon in the night, advertising its next show. But tonight, the club is dark, while four kindred gather to examine what could be their most vital clue in an ongoing mystery. Just one night after they sent another enemy to the final death. Let's take care of a little housekeeping first. I have everyone's hunger and health and willpower recorded. But Jasper, you are currently at four aggravated wounds and hunger too. Mm -hmm. It's been one night more. Do you want to try to heal another wound? I do. Three rouse rouse checks. checks. Two successes, one failure. One failure. Your hunger increases to three, but your aggravated wounds reduce to three. Mm-hmm. It balances everything out. So nearly back in fighting trim. Hmm. Another housekeeping question. Jasper, yeah. after Rodrigo the La Sombra Scourge passed into final death, you... Helped yourself 
to a handful of his ashes. I did. And you put them in a pocket. I did. Where are those ashes tonight? They are still in my pocket. In your pocket? In a little box that I had at home. I took it with me. Disgusting. Yes. And the rest of him, the rest of Rodrigo, his ashes, the remnants of his clothing that wasn't burned away by Zeus's fury, his personal effects, what became of all that? We took them all, and I would like to inspect them when the opportunity presents itself. So you took them away from the hacienda? Yes. I don't know what Tremere might be capable of with the kindred's ashes. Mm. Seems useful. Very well. As you gather in the Maharani, Campbell finds you. Campbell. Sir, it's Avery. Um, you know, we sent him to drive around the city with that package. Yeah, he was supposed to. And you asked me to tell him to throw it in the ocean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, he's, I don't know where he is. He's missing. The hmm. Police found the SUV abandoned in Santa Monica. He's not in it. There's no trace of him, and I don't know if he actually threw those things in the ocean before he went wherever he is now. Well, keep an eye out for him. Uh, Santa Sir, Monica's rough. Do you, do you think he's dead? I mean, unfortunately, uh, he probably didn't leave the car and just go for a walk for his health. But who knows? X and the drum circle, they're weird. Maybe he's just somewhere partying. Um, I actually take out my phone and I text X. I might need your help with something and send it to him. A few moments later, you get a reply. And the reply message is, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, pineapple, smiley face. <laughs> I say, uh, one of my guys might have gotten lost over there. Uh, in three eggplant emojis. <laughs> and send and emojis. <laughs> the reply that X texts you back is Santa Monica? Question mark. Or thereabouts. Sad face, out. sad face, sad face, sad face. Pineapple, sad face. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Campbell, I think, uh, doesn't look too good for Avery, but... Still keep an ear out, all right? Yes, sir. Um, we'll do whatever it is we can. Yeah, I, I know, Therese, but uh, this isn't going to be the thing that I possibly go into her debt over, unfortunately. I understand, sir. I'll, uh, I'll make sure the others know what happened. Very well. Um, we've brought on the extra security forces, as you asked. Mm. Roof... Basement, sub-basement, regular patrols throughout the entire club now. Yeah. And everybody's armed. Good. Because um, after last night, probably can be expecting more company sooner than later, unfortunately. How will they know? It's a short list of suspects. <laughs> I can think of five. Hmm. And four of us are here right now. I, I get it. I get it. Okay. Hey, you good? Yeah, it's just, it's been a tough couple of weeks, you know, since the Maharaja burned and yeah. it feels like we've just haven't had a break. Because we haven't, my friend, but uh, maybe soon. Yeah, maybe soon. Yeah, but... Uh, I miss Eve. I miss her too, but yeah. I think she's... Uh, She's not doing too, not doing too bad, from what I understand. You've heard from her. I've heard about her. Well, I'll send her my love. I'll do that. Thanks, sir. I'll do that. I need to go uh, check on the basement rotation. Um, we might need to make a run later tonight. Yes, sir. I, I, I make just, sure a vehicle is ready. Yeah, we might need a, we might need a few of them. So, but I'll let you know. Yes, sir. Were we in the room for that? I would, I would believe that you are. Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't mind it. Yeah. While um, while they're doing that, I also send a message to X. 
What does the text message read? When are we having our lesson? The reply text is half moon, three quarter moon, full moon. Okay. I just reply with, all right. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, pineapple, <laughs> smiley face. Just wanted to make sure it was actually him. Mm, it wasn't. I think so. I think so too. It's weird. I was so irritated every time he was around, but now we haven't seen him in so long. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little worried about him. Yeah. Okay. So your guy's dead. That reminds me. Um, rummage through Rodrigo's personal effects. Did he have a wallet? Did he have a phone? Like, mm. it's like. So. What remains of Rodrigo, of course, is greasy ash, familiar from when kindred pass. Charred remains of his suit jacket, his turtleneck sweater. Just not a lot left of his clothing. Lightning tends to take a heavy toll on fibers. <laughs> Duly noted. He had a very expensive gold wristwatch. It looks like it might have been an antique, a very early watch. It is, of course, not operational now and partly burned thanks to the electricity that coruscated around his body and destroyed him. He also had what looks like the remains of a gold signet ring. Now, you have seen something like this before. On the night that you helped Casey deal with the Los Perdidos situation in Boyle Heights, the Ventru, whom the Valkyries murdered, in his ashes you also found a gold signet ring with a symbol that was unfamiliar to you. This ring has the same symbol. I, have, I of course, relay all this, and I, I look at the back of the watch. Is there an inscription? On both things, I'd look in the ring and look in the watch. Yes, there is an inscription. It's not in a language that you recognize. You think it might be French or Italian, possibly Spanish. This mean anything? Is it the ring or the watch that has it? The watch. Does this mean anything to you all? Mm, no, I don't believe I read any of those languages. Mm. What mm. language do you use? Spanish? Um, it is Italian, which mm. is similar to Spanish. You think that one of the words might be love, since they are both similar in Spanish and Italian. But the rest of it you can't read. Out of curiosity, can I tell uh, what brand of the watch it is? It's a very expensive collector's item that isn't made anymore. But it was very popular in the 1930s, in mm. the Great Depression, among people who still retained their wealth. So this is uh, out of fashion, but is from the 1930s. No one really makes this anymore, and uh, there, the inscription has the word love, at least that's as much as I can make out. Mm, do you think it's a present from his sister? Or maybe their parents maybe. long ago? Well, yeah, I mean, I can translate it if you give it to me and I take some time. Sure. I'm like, um, Eva, does this symbol mean anything to you? We've seen it once before. And I'd show her the signet ring and hand it to you. Mm. Do I recognize it? The symbol is not familiar to you. It is not astrological, nor is it alchemical. It is not a cult that you know of. Mm. Doesn't mean it isn't a cult, but it is not within your realm of experience. No, I don't know this, sorry. Well, we've got this stuff, we've got his effects, we've got his ashes. I mean, uh, pardon my French, but can you do Tremere shit with this? I think I already did a lot with that. <laughs> Point taken. I don't know of anything to be done with ashes. I don't know if there's some form of psychometry. I mean, you tasted uh, Annabelle's Jasper, blood. Would you please make an occult, uh, an intelligence and occult role? Yes, of course. You are examining the signet ring, I believe. 
That would be four successes. You've seen this symbol. Okay. It's in your book. This, um, this, this ring. This symbol appears in conjunction with the labyrinth and in conjunction with my book. Well, remember, there was the guy in Boyle Heights. He had that, too. Mm-hmm. Do we know anything about that man? That was the night that we met Rychek and right. Sanchez. Right, and... but the man who had the ring, I believe, is one of the dead ones, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, they're all, wait, they're all dead now. They are. One of oh, them, yeah. the ones I ran over in the car. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Casey may know. Casey may know. Right, she was there, wasn't she? She was there. Mm-hmm. All right, well... Put a bit in that. Yeah. Well, oh, I shoot. in the box. All right, the box. <laughs> What's in the box? Uh, I was kind of hoping we didn't unlock that right now, but okay. All right, I'm ready. I think. Do want... you want to retrieve the box, Nelly? Yeah. So Nelly excuses herself to retrieve the box from her her quarters in the club. I would ask Campbell to. Um, Get like a nice urn for his ashes. Pending how this shakes out, maybe we'll return him to be buried. You know, I don't want to just put Rodrigo in a an urn, sir. Just something nice. I, I just well, don't I want to. I think him in we've got some flower vases behind the bar, maybe. Yeah, something. Maybe just like a wine carafe. I don't know. Hey, yes. Some, some respect. Send them to a sister. Maybe not yet, but maybe. You know, <laughs> so. Nelly. Um, Eva, would you mind coming with me to go get the box just in case? Something weird happened of course. with it. <laughs> We're way past weird. Well. <laughs> excellent. I um, just wanted to catch up real quick while we were walking over and see how you were doing since we got Jasper back. Oh. Uh, you know, I don't think I'm... I'm not doing very well, but it's okay. Why is that? I never killed anyone. Oh, really? Yeah. Personal choice, I assume. Of course. Hmm. Interesting. Um, How do you feel now? How can I help you? I feel fine right now. Don't worry. It gets easier. Not that I don't know if you'd want to <sighs> kill other people, but... Mm. I've been struggling. I think that maybe what's so hard is that uh, it didn't bother me. Mm. And that upsets me. I feel like I'm getting further from who I am. Interesting. Well, there is something about my clan that um, helps people in situations such as yourself. We um, help kindred get more in touch with uh, their humanity. <sighs> and perhaps maybe you and I can spend some time going over what helps you connect again. Oh. I feel very connected now. Thank you. Anytime. Are you all right? I'm always fine. <laughs> but I do have a growing concern when you mentioned, uh, well, when Strauss was mentioned. Yeah. He brings out the worst in me. I can tell. Why? He destroyed my life. I understand that one. He ruined what was most dear to me and hurt her and I, he just, he scares me. It's fine. It's not. He is going to 
come at certain point, just like Chaz tried to come for me. Yes, I'm scared of that, and it makes me wonder. I, I, I don't, I don't like to put you all in danger. In, <laughs> Have you met us? I mean, you hang out with the one who puts himself in the middle of danger. I know. It should be his middle name by this point. I don't need to put him in more danger yet. I, I don't know if I'm doing a disservice by staying. You think it would be better that you went? I don't know, maybe. Alone? Where Strauss can only get you? And you don't think that he's gonna try to torture the rest of us? I don't know, I'd... Maybe if I'm gone, I don't know. Oh, sweetheart, no. No, 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 no. The only way we are going to fight this is that we fight as a we, not an I. We're here to help you just as much as you've been here to help us. You've got to have faith and trust that we've got your back. And I know you don't want to put us in danger. I, I, I really get that. I really do. But we're going to be in more danger without you. Because we can't fight Strauss. They're so lucky to have you. Huh? You take such good care and, and watch after everyone. It's makes me feel more reassured. No one's ever said that to me. <laughs> Thanks. You would have made a wonderful mother. I wish I was. The rusted iron strong box is right where you left it. Battered. Locked. But secure. You recall that there are indentations on the lid that you believe match the size and shape of the stones in the necklace, the heirloom necklace of your family that you wear. You bring this uh, strong box back downstairs? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not very heavy, even though it is surprisingly large, perhaps two feet on a side. Quite light here. Not even sure there's anything really inside. Highly doubt there's anything in here. Well, nothing is moving. You feel no objects moving around. It makes no sound when you listen. It's just a box, right? <laughs> just a box. I suppose we'll see. Let's show the others. Okay. While they're gone, mm -hmm. uh, I lean in and I look at the hole that is now, I guess, slightly smaller. Ah, uh, the hole in Jasper's chest? <laughs> hmm. It is indeed somewhat smaller. Can I help? Mm, it just takes time to heal. But it gets better every night. In about three or four more days, I'll be fine. Have you had a chance to get back home and feed? Well, not yet, but I'm doing all right. It's, I've had worse. <laughs> no, you haven't. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I've been hungrier. I mean, while they're gone, man, I told you. No, 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 no. <laughs> No. All right. But, because, again, you losing control is not good either. I know. I'll be fine. It's a... Look, I, um... I'm sure you've... You've all... You all are nosy enough to have noticed by now that, uh... We tend to come and go at the same time. <coughs> yeah. Um, it's made feeding a little more difficult 
We haven't approached that yet. Oh. She doesn't know. Not yet. She will. To be fair, she, I don't know about her either, so. Well, I mean, she asked about Bailey and... I know, I heard. I mean, I'm not here to pass judgment. I, I Apparently not. I mean, if that were the case, I would have been gone by now. Mm. Look. Are you sure you're okay what happened to your son? Absolutely not. Didn't think so. But, you know, you and I don't get to talk very much, but <clears throat> right now, let me give you the quick info dump on me. Right. Nellie's running around with Abrams. Yeah. She doesn't think I know, but I do. Right. Annabelle has put my son directly in the path of immortal monsters that witch nothing but to harm us. Yeah. I would have burned this city to the ground to get you back. And you still hate me almost as much as you hate yourself. And I don't hate you as much as I hate myself, so it's a whole thing. Almost. And Eva can apparently throw lightning bolts when she gets upset, like some kind of Greek version of the Incredible Hulk. I know, right? And and we just killed the only person that uh, an unstoppable shadow monster ever loved. Well, listen, I can't control almost all of those things. But I can say that I don't hate you. Nor do I hate Nellie. Nor do I hate Annabelle. You're all pretty in neutral territory. But... When we... When we found Annabelle... Yeah, I probably did dislike all of you pretty heavily. But we've been through a lot since then. A lot of it that is way over our heads. And I... I was pretty convinced for a long time that I could get myself out of any situation regardless of either of your help. I've recently come to the conclusion that that's not true. I had a brick wall I couldn't smash through. And you all, as stupid as it was, came and saved me. And wasted the lives of other people to do so, which I'm not exactly happy about, but I can't do anything about that. So, I appreciate what you've done for me. And I appreciate what you do for me, even when I don't ask for help. I appreciate this place has secret passages so I can move about when there are other people here. So I don't hate you. Thanks, man. I don't hate you, too. <laughs> well, um, if we survive the next couple of days and you get patched up and Annabelle and Mark come back from wherever they are, she texted me that they're fine but won't tell me what they're doing. Maybe we can all get this out in the open, but I guess the next thing we got to do is figure out what's in the box. Right. And then maybe check on the labyrinth. Maybe. You sure you want to go back down there again? Absolutely not, but lots of things I don't want to do are happening, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's see how it goes. So Nellie and Eva return then with the Iron Strongbox. Found it. I would hope you haven't lost it. Well, there's a lot of feather boas and fabric and, you know, the, the new collections get any, you know what? It's, I, you, you know, okay, forgive me, you guys, if this seems like a noob question, but you know, uh, growing up I played a lot of D&D &D, and there was this thing called explosive runes that if you just read it, it blew up, you know? Is that like a thing with this? That if we just like gaze upon it, death? I mean, we'll go like full Indiana Jones. Like I don't, a lot of things have happened that I didn't know were possible, so. Mm. Well, Eva, you have already looked at the box with um, Sense the Unseen when it was retrieved yeah. from the shallow grave in the ruins of the Hacienda. It did, of course, radiate 
a magical aura, but it is magic that is not familiar to you. It is not blood sorcery, whatever mm. it is. So without a considerable research and perhaps even some experimentation, it's difficult to say what the box is capable of. And there are no markings or symbols on the box? No markings or symbols, nor even a, an obvious lock, even though it resists all attempts to open the lid normally. The only thing about the metal that is unusual are those indentations on the top. Can I just make one request before we do this? Hmm? Let's open it in the quiet room. I don't know if this place is bugged. I don't know if there's an electromagnetic component. I, I don't know. Let's just... Fair, fair. Yeah. So you want to take it to the room in Club Maharani, which you have set aside as proof against electronics. Yes. The, the dead room, Yes. as it were. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a small room uh, on the lowest floor, the same floor as the uh, meeting room and conference room and the parking garage. Mm -hmm. So you all reconvene there mm -hmm. in the small room. Your phones do not work here. And if any of you are in possession of any other electronic devices that require access to the internet or a Wi-Fi signal or satellite or any other external source of power or communication, they don't work here either. So, this is where you wish to open it? I want to say when I, seeing as I came from my haven to the club tonight, I did bring with me the uh, warded dagger. The Benedante dagger. Mm -hmm. mm. The one with that is warded against spirits. Spirits. Along with the machete that Nelly gifted me. Because I no longer have my nice knife. Mm. I'll get you a new one. Not the same. Continue. So. Okay. Put it in. Well, unsurprisingly. They fit perfectly in those indentations. There is an audible click. Lift the box open. And the hinged lid of the box swings open. It does not explode. One victory. Mm. <laughs> now inside, there is something after all. It looks like a large antique key, but it is not made of metal. It doesn't look like it's made of anything at all. The key is black, absolutely jet black. It reflects no light of any kind. It looks like the don't, don't mirror. Touch it. Don't touch it. If you didn't know better, you would say that it is a shadow, a two-dimensional thing. It looks very much like a shadow cast by an object that isn't there. Do I remember any keyholes in the labyrinth? Well, specifically not though. in the labyrinth itself, but you do remember that as part of the frame of the black mirror, mm -hmm. there is a hole for which you could not account. I think I know where that goes. <laughs> Uh, I think I might have a small inkling of I that was the thing that we went through that was real cold and Ter yeah. no. terrible. Right. Uh, yeah. Um Can I see that box? I hand the box over. Mm -hmm. um. Sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> And I yeah. stick my hand in to try and stick grab it. your hand and try to grab it. <laughs> Good thing you're not three quarters dead. Cool, cool, cool. At first, it's a little like trying to grab water. It's hard to get a hold of. And you remember the sensation of trying to grapple with a La Sombra. And whenever they became shadow, 
They were difficult to grasp. It is cold. It is very much like the effect of La Sombra's powers or the cold of passing through the void behind the black mirror. But with a little trial and error, you can grasp it. It's uncanny. It isn't there. It's a two-dimensional shape of pure blackness. It is, in fact, a corporeal shadow. But whatever object is casting the shadow cannot be seen. So this is what my great uncle was trying to get. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but that means your family had access to the labyrinth? I mean, it's definitely been there longer than I've been there. Um, we do sort of own the land. Yeah, but this is an, a whole other thing than having a land deed. This key goes to the mirror. There is a hole in the mirror that this key goes to. And I'm very excited to see where it goes. <laughs> you know, you, you rarely look excited, so I'm for it. But if, can I just ask, because both of you can see things I can't see. Is there anything else in the box, written on the box? I, I mean, is there a false lid in the box? Activating Sense Unseen? Yes. And I actually try a, a fairly mundane feeling around for spaces. Mm. Well, since the unseen is free, make a roll of wits and aspects if you are using it. One success. <laughs> hey, One success. I can spend willpower to re Perhaps not. How many? You can spend willpower. Oh, but you can only re-roll. Yeah, I'll, s I'll spend a willpower to re-roll. Very well. I roll. Okay. It's cool. I can re-roll three. You can always check later. Yeah. Three. Three successes. So, since the unseen provides you with no additional information about the box. Surprisingly, it is Victor's very mundane exploration of the box's contents that reveals something <laughs> new. <laughs> the tattered cloth bottom of the box peels away to reveal a small piece of what looks like mm, old paper It's your family. Tire. I actually try and keep it intact because I don't know if this is vital to storing the key. So mm -hmm. I'm very. Mm -hmm. Well, remember what happened to the, uh, the papers inside the obelisk mm -hmm. when you touched them. Mm -hmm. Many of them crumbled away into dust. Mm -hmm. We may only have one shot at this. So. Is the is the writing visible without touching it? Yes. It's writing that is very similar to the writing in your book. It might even be in the same hand. You couldn't swear to it, but they're very similar. This require... Hold this. I take my... Take the box, position my wrist over the paper, and I drop a little, make a tiny prick and drop a little bit of blood over the paper. Using your own vitae. You have seen this effect before, when you have performed the same action with your book. Not so. The vitae drips, splashes, spreads across the small piece of paper. The writing appears to change, to swim, to rearrange itself into a language that you can read. It appears to be a Latin incantation or chant or poem. Perhaps a verse. Um, 
Um, Words of power? Paper, 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 pen. Um, I do have paper ink because I know electronics don't work, so I have pencils and pads and things in here. Whatever this chant or verse is, the name of it, according to the words across the top, appear to be Tenebrae Imperium. Imperial or regal shadow. Uh, to be clear, even though I don't read Latin, I did witness it change, though. Yes, you saw what happened to the words on the paper. You said Tenebrae Imperium. 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 Okay. Maybe. I tried to the best of my ability to copy everything that is written on the paper onto a notepad. Mm, onto a physical yeah, pad. Yeah, piece of paper. Very well. Yeah. The writing, as you're copying, begins to fade. You barely manage to finish writing the copy before the parchment is blank. Got it. Hear me out. Maybe we need to leave that here, because if for some reason we lose custody of the key, we don't necessarily want to lose the key and the words. Fair. Sure. I've got bigger questions. What the ever fuck was my uncle doing finding all of this? What the ever fuck was your uncle doing burying it there? I don't think he was burying anything. He was trying to find it. Well, but I mean, when he lived, this all would have been from his time. So this is your family doing all this La Sombra stuff. Wait. Yeah. Do you don't think he's... We don't know where he got his power, <laughs> remember? Hmm. Eva. Yeah. When you moved Jasper, you were very delicate in your movements. Mm -hmm. Do you think you might be able to take the paper out and just put it on the table? Just out of the box? Oh. Yes, I can certainly try. Because it is true, when we touch some of the other things, they... Fell apart. Instantly. Right. Try to use movement of the mind to... Ah. Delicately remove the paper. Make the check. Rouse check first. Mm -hmm. Failure. 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 So, your beast licks its fangs. Finally, finally, finally. No. It is an opportune time. You thirst. I just fed, we're fine. You know you crave a taste. You have craved him since you met him. He would give freely were you to ask. No. So. With your hunger increased, go ahead and make the roll. Four successes. Mm. More than enough to manipulate such a small and light object. The paper, uh, seemingly of its own accord, floats out of the box and into the air where it hovers gently, flapping just slightly in the air. While she's holding, like, see if the, anything on the back, anything, just, like, kind of give it a quick once over while we can see it without touching it. It is quite blank now, quite a plain piece of paper. The, um, the writing is the same writing in my book. It, um, it only responds to my blood. Well, not me specifically, um, my clan. By the way, I have uh, papers to give you. I promised you a long time ago that I would give you a third of what's in that book. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Um, Fucking books. I mean, they're power. But um, you said the title translated to 
Oh, to Tenebrae Imperium. Tenebrae Imperium, do I know what that means? Uh, the rough translation from Latin to English would be uh, Imperial Shadow or Regal Shadow. So, uh, the I haven't translated all of it, um, but the, the header of that note uh, translates to Tenebrae Imperium, which means uh, Regal or Royal Shadow. I'm hypothesizing right now that because that as you noticed when we went through that mirror it took us to a specific point in the labyrinth which took us very near to where the um, uh, my guest is sleeping I think this may change the destination hmm makes sense unlocking a different location I mean to be clear None of this makes sense, but under that umbrella, yes, that makes sense. And this seems to confirm mm, at least somewhat more than my hypothesis about uh, where the Somber draw their powers from versus the powers of the mirror all being the same thing is accurate. So what does the royal shadow fall into place? Um, good question. Okay. Eva? Am I able to read the rest of it? It is an incantation. It is, uh, or, or a verse. Sometimes the two are impossible to tell apart. The gist of it is that by speaking the incantation, reciting it out loud, and using the key at the same time, one is able to affect what a mirror shows. Yes. The words and the key together, they will change perhaps the location of the mirror, but what it will show us. Interesting. Okay. We could try. We could. <laughs> I mean, at what expense is that to us? Are we gonna like blow up if this happens? Yeah, probably. Um, well. That's how all experiments go. <laughs> I mean, we can't let you go alone, especially not in this state. And we know the cam is in the park. Yeah. That bothers me. Who? <sighs> anyway, um. So, look. We don't know where that leads or what that does. So we right. can't count on that being something that even remotely helps us at this point in time. True. So, laying everything out, what, what do we have to do? Well, correct me if I'm wrong or if I've missed anything. Uh, this key, and presumably this passage, was something both the Cam wanted and Don Antonio wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is some connection between the Nosferatu, the Lasombra, and your family, because that necklace opened that box, and those earrings opened that tomb for Griffith J. Griffith. And these were heirlooms. Yeah. So I guess we go see where it goes? Maybe we'll get some information on the other side. It's possible, but it could also lead to somewhere where we really don't want to be. Oh, it's already going somewhere I don't want to be. <laughs> Um, but if what you guys said was true and there is something down there that will give us an edge to at least make the Camarilla just stop their advancement, I mean, we have to try. No, that's fair. Um, look, this, the situation we're in right now is not... <laughs> Uh, to understate a whole hell of a lot, not good. We need, we don't win this. Well, I, I mean, personally, I don't think we win this at all, but I, we don't get out of this by direct confrontation. We I'm can't win through direct confrontation. So how do we make this hot or cold? We have to stalemate them. We have to make it expensive, actually. We have to make it 
not worth the effort expended. Which reminds me, Casey said when they hit them, they got a lot of their cash and gold. Right. Probably need to make sure that's safe. I mean, I put in a big vault here when we knew we were building the place, so that should happen. Um, yeah. When we get out of this room, I'll, I'll message her. We probably need to find out what that is, at least before they do. Yeah. Is this something that, like, the weird sisters could help you with? Like, we got this, we got Rodrigo, we got... I, I don't know. Maybe. They have three minds put together, so it's possible. I mean, I'm sure we could use their help regardless. It's up to you. Uh, if you want to do it the magical research way, if you want to do it the let's just see what happens way. I'm... In Mm. And with your family, I think you obviously have a significant say in this also. I mean, I'm inclined to just find out what's going on. Just go through. We've done it before. Yeah, because I knew where it led. You didn't. <laughs> no, I you did not. You weren't with me. I knew where it went. Huh? I mean, well, the first time I went through, I didn't know where it went. <laughs> we sure didn't know where it went the first time we went through it. Exactly. Huh. What do you think? Well, I... I can call the sisters if you want, but it's your family and... and your home and... Everybody comes over nowadays, so... I... I don't know if they would be able to help, honestly. They may be able to help with other things, so not specifically just the key, maybe... Yeah. Um... Help with... The web, the ley lines. It's true. Yeah, you did Shh. mention something about the shadow filling up the room and driving you out of it. Yeah. But that was we'd a thing. also be putting them in danger. I have a f feeling that was a self defense mechanism yeah. by the labyrinth itself. I could be entirely wrong, but it was after we, you grabbed mm -hmm. one of the cords. And then it happened. Yes. After it burned you. Oh, yes. Uh, about that I didn't mention that it was the ley line that was connected to the Getty Center. And right. I wanted to see what would happen. And I did check later, and it appears there was an earthquake. Yeah. I mean, uh, we can't destroy the Getty Center, but uh, <coughs> I mean, did Kyoko ever pay you back what she owed you for the last time this happened to you? Yeah. Yeah? She did. She did? Uh, that's how I, um, that's how I hurt Chaz. Oh. You know, um, I, my vote, let's go. Let's just go look around. Maybe we Stop. get out of our depth. Maybe we call the Weird Sisters then. I think the best idea is reconnaissance right now. Yeah. Okay. I... The Weird Sisters can come over, why not? Everybody comes over. It, it's your home, man. No, it's fine. it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We have things we need to accomplish and I can always kill them later. It's fine. Well, if it makes you feel any better, if the Camarilla Tremere are poking around and had maybe gotten down there, I'd rather have our Tremere with I us. I would as well. When their Tremeres show up. Oh, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Let's mm. do it, let's I, call them. Again, uh, it would be putting them in danger, I just. I know. Well, I might have mentioned to them that part of the terms of their stay in the valley was they might be called upon to help defend the valley from time to time. Okay. I think this counts. I'm uh, sure at least Kyoko specifically would also be interested. They are trustworthy, right? As trustworthy as any kindred are. Mm -hmm. They Fine. have a wonderful bookshop that they're running now, though. <laughs> you would like it. It's not all fashion, my darling. It's, it's all important. I can step out of the room to... <laughs> yeah contact them. I'll just text Kyoko. Uh, where should they meet us? 
here, or...? What is oh. the message that you send to Kyoko exactly? Probably there. Okay. Uh, it's up to you. I will say, hello, sister, it's Eva. Would you meet Your us? phone rings. It is Kyoko's number. <laughs> hello, Kyoko. So bored. So bored, so bored. Hi, how are you? I'm How's it going? Good. I'm how good. you doing? It, I'm good. It's good to hear from you. It's Kyoko. great to hear from you, too. So bored. I hate this bookstore. I hate running this thing. <laughs> hello, Mystic Circle Books. This is it, Kyoko. How can I oh. help you? Gag. <laughs> Well, hopefully we have something a little more interesting for you, if you're up for it. Oh, yeah. If you and- Who are we gonna get? Oh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Aww. But if you and your How's sisters- Jasper? I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. It's fine. Um, Jasper's good. In fact, if you would like to come meet us, we have an adventure to go on. Jasper. Yeah, what's the what? Um, meet us by the gas station near Griffith Park. I'll tell her the specific. Area. Yeah, okay. Weird, but all right. Uh, we'll be looking into some occult things. We're going to kidnap you. Sweet. <sighs> what? Make sure they're not followed. It, make sure you're not followed. Uh, no problem. Bring your sisters if they're available. Um, okay. I mean, if if they'd like to, I. All right, we'll just see. Hang, hang on, hang on, oh. hang on. Here, here. No, you, you can hear Kyoko speaking to someone. She's trying to cover it with her hand, cover the receiver with her hand, but you can still hear. <laughs> I don't know what they want. She said adventure. I don't know gas station in the park. No. Oh come on! I never get to have any fun. Please. <laughs> hang on, just a sec. Okay. Hester's voice speaks to you on the other end of the connection. Miss Eva. Hello, Hester. Good evening. Good evening. Are you well? Uh, I am. You wish our assistance? Yes, if uh, any it help would interest that we, you. Any help that we can offer is, of course, yours for the asking. May I ask in return for at least a hint? Now, is it safe to speak? Uh, perhaps not over the phone, no. You know how I feel about that. Where shall we meet you? I'll give her the coordinates. Mm. Very well. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. <sighs> the line. Go yeah, dead. Then I'm good. Jasper's good. Jasper is, Jasper's great, the best. Is Jasper not good? Well, what else am I supposed to say? It's a whole punch clean through him, yeah, I guess that kind of would. You want me to describe that you have a gaping hole through your chest because you keep throwing yourself in front of danger repeatedly? Yeah, they might not count oh. if we told them that. Uh, Did you see that? That was fair. Mm -hmm. It was like a little salt. If you like tuck it. <laughs> Interesting. Huh. Look at that face. Oh. It's adorable. Um, Anywho. I also step out. You step out of the room as well. I do. And I take a picture of the signet ring, and I send it to Casey. And I say, does this mean anything to you? Casey texts back a few moments later. Looks like the one we got off that other dude. Uh, I reply, it does. Seen it anywhere else? Nope. Actually, I hit dial. I call. She answers. Hey, Wait. hey, your barrenness. Yeah. What's up? Hey, thanks again for this uh, sweet gift here. I've been citing it in. Uh, this thing's great. Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, I can't wait to use it again. Just give me a target. It's absolutely. How's, uh, how's Sick doing? Her, uh, her sire's got her. He, um, he knows what to do. Says she'll be okay in a while. How you doing? You're welcome to come lay low over here if you need till you kind of rebuild. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, funny you should say that. It's it's pretty quiet around here, and that shadow monster bitch knows where I live. That is correct. And she might come, you know, to have a word with any of us. She knows where you live, too, dude. That's true. And uh, the lights are always on. Anyway, I appreciate the offer. Maybe I'll take you up on that. It's, it's kind of quiet here, you know? 
Absolutely. Well, anytime. But one other question. Uh, on that mission the other night. Yeah. You said you got away with some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. We Well, I burned the drugs, but... Um, right. Cash, gold, some other valuable looking yeah, stuff. We got. We didn't get all of it, maybe, but we got a lot. Maybe not too many details over the phone, but I think yeah, yeah. probably need to make arrangements to lock that down. I got a pretty significant vault over here. Yeah, is it like one of those old time bank deals with the big wheel and the it door? It is not. It's way more computer panels and hissing and barium freezing locks. It's insane, but yeah. Cool. Literally. Yeah. Well, look, I don't think I can move all this stuff myself. You got somebody to help me? Well, I need to make a stop, and then uh, I'll show up with however much. How many people you think we need to move fast? Well, I mean, we didn't stash it here. Right, sure. I don't, don't tell me. Do not tell me over the phone where it is. I don't okay, want to know. Okay, 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 okay. Just how many people? Um, let's say, uh, I mean, some of this shit is heavy. So, so maybe strong. two of your big black cars, two of your fancy big cars? Got it. Uh, okay, just we send your dudes and to pick me up, and I'll show them. Yeah, but I want to be there just in case. I feel like they probably have a vested interest in recovery. You just want to. You just want to swim in it, don't you? Absolutely. Like, I mean, <laughs> what else are we doing this for? If yeah. Have a, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So we got to. We got to. I do get it. Yeah. Um, also, also, if you don't hear back from me in a couple of hours. Um, we might have met the final death and uh, what? get revenge. What are you into? You know what? Hang on. Yeah. I'll be right over. No, thanks. I, I, got, I, got, the, I got the gun. Uh, just keep an eye on things. I'll call you when we get done. An eye on what? Yeah. Okay, bye, Casey. Oh, fuck. Hang up. <laughs> she texts you back a long string of expletives. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I reply back, just keep the gun loaded. Her reply is, always, wink. Well, again, assuming we get through this, maybe we go see Casey after. Nellie? Um, while he was on the phone conversation, I would uh, like to send two text messages. Two? To yes. whom? One to uh, Abrams. What does the text to Abrams say? I am going underground tonight. I should be fine, but I thought you should know just in case. I have information for you. Abrams' return text is, do you need anything? No. He texts again. Then be very careful, please. Always. You're not sure you've ever heard him say please. Nope. Nope, but always with a, a red heart. And second message is to uh, Mr. Golden. It's a little bit more uh, serious, but um, mm. status on Stardusters? It's a long wait for a reply. Perhaps cellular technology isn't conveniently used underground. But you do get a reply eventually, and the reply is success, exclamation point. <laughs> Um, excellent. I look forward to the report. He replies back. When can I deliver? Question mark. In one night. He texts back. Understood. Thank you. Actually, after my call, one last thing. I just sent a text to my friend from Chicago. What's need, the text? We need to talk. The reply is, kind of busy. And then, when and where? Mm, not tonight. Busy too, but soon. We should go back in the room. Yeah. I, I, I leave the door open. I didn't even try and hide any of this from them. I mean, the text, who knows what I'm typing, but the conversation with Casey, I didn't try and hide from them. Very well. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Uh, you guys go down. Give me a second. Yeah, absolutely. Just a minute. Go get my knives. 
Yeah. You are retrieving your weaponry. Yes. Is there anything else that you are bringing along this expedition that we should know about? The necklace? Any other heirloom jewelry that my family gave me? <laughs> you possess all that there is. Okay. Music box, rocking horse. Yeah, you know, <laughs> lock of hair. Mm. Um, I do let Campbell know to have uh, have three cars ready. Three, sir. Later. Are you expecting a lot of guests? Uh, we might need to go pick something up. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Three cars, drivers only, or? Yeah, three cars, drivers and a shotgun. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey. We get you this, Fairbanks. I guess we better get through this then, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, is Bailey back yet? I know he was still a little banged up, and Avery's out. Is... Yes, sir. He's back on duty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have Bailey pull one of the SUVs around. We're going out. Yes, sir. Okay. And I do head to the garage. Are you bringing anything in particular with you? Uh, one of the guns. The other one's in the safe. I'm going to bring one of the Ralphus pistols. Mm -hmm. Are you... You're all right. Yes. Why? You're acting different. Oh, I... Uh, <laughs> I don't mean to be. No, you're f fine. You're not... You seem very... Oh, I, um... <laughs> I fed before coming. And that makes you... touchy and giddy? Oh. Um... <laughs> well, uh, they were... I... They were taking, uh... Various drugs, I suppose. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, I, that's fine. I. I didn't mean to touch you if you didn't want me to. No, that's not what this. Is. No, not even remotely what this is about. I didn't. No, that makes perfect sense. That you'd be acting like that. Uh, I. You said painkillers the other night. Yeah, so, that was just what was available. I just so you you need you prefer uh, chemical intoxicants to be in the blood. Yes, I it it I don't I don't need it. It just helps me feel more alive. We need to have a talk about feeding. Okay. Because I have things, too. Well, that's fine. What, what is it? I don't know if this is the place. Ah. Uh, I'll explain in detail later, but for now, what you did to wake me up is pretty close. Oh, uh, do, do you need more blood? No, no, I'm fine now. I don't need, I don't ever need you to do that. I'm just saying. I, you could if you wanted to. Because you don't. You can choose not to bond. Yes. Right. I, I would do that for you. Oh, we need to go. We need to go to the thing. Um. Right. I'm sorry I lied to you about the cages. Uh, and I just head off down <laughs> stairs. Let's see. Who has 
the shadow key. Uh, I believe you still have it. We should probably put it in the box. Yes. It's back in the box? Yes. Yeah. And you are bringing the box with you? Just with Sans paper. Sans paper. You will notice that the box, now that it has been opened once, opens and closes freely. You don't have to use the necklace each time. Very well. Ever, I mean, while well, we're in the, in the car. Like, so you enter the SUV with Bailey as your driver. Hey, welcome back. Hey, thanks, sir. It was, uh, it was really boring in the hospital. <laughs> Yeah, let's not yeah. do it again anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, very few Pokemon there. <sighs> no, it's a tragedy. Yeah. So, uh, where are we going? Uh, I also give the address of the gas station, which I believe you, you've you driven us there before. There again, sir? Yeah, yeah. Nothing good ever happens up there. Nothing at all, my friend, nothing at all. But we gotta go. Awesome. Okay. Once we start driving, um, the uh, Eva... Could you keep your eye out? Because um, we had someone come after this thing that uh, only you guys can see. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to see him. He should be gone, but I mean, I, he shouldn't have been there in the first place, so I don't know how that works. A follow-up question. If we're right, and this has a similar power source as what Aurora draws on, if by some unfortunate series of events she were to get in there, does that mean it would make her stronger? I have zero idea. I'd rather not find out. Well, I, would, I have no idea what's gonna, what would happen to that. Do you close up that back door I told you about? The one you guys got through? That's yeah, the one. Well, it's sufficiently hidden. It's not gone. Hmm. Cool, cool, cool. I don't want there to be only one entrance to there. I put words on the entrances you showed me. Yeah, we've offered some measure of protection. Uh, before the Weird Sisters get there. Yes. You remember the first time you were there. Mm-hmm. And it looked one way. Mm-hmm. And then when I brought you there recently, it looked a different way. Where I live, my haven, yeah. it looked different. Um, it will look the original way when we get there. Okay, do you have any guess currently that we need to know about? No. Look, um, they saw, I told you a little bit of what I do in not so direct a fashion. They know how I feed. You now know how I feed, to a certain extent. I feed on our kind. You told me you were getting them as jobs. Yeah, which is not not the truth. I did that for... So where did you lie? I sometimes use them as storage, pantries. Mm. I keep, it's dangerous what I do and not supposed to be done and usually an outright killable offense. So I take I take bad people, and I'm... I make them not people, and then I keep them there. You're getting mortals? Yeah. And then I make them not mortals. And then I live off them for a while. What do you mean, bad people? 
people who hurt other people, people who sexually, physically, emotionally do but, terrible things. But you catch them doing these terrible things. I find them. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. That's cool. All right. Ooh, uh, follow up question. Who are you feeding to the bad people? Other bad people? I try to feed them as little as possible. Because you, you got to understand, man, if you're kidnapping mortals and then kidnapping additional mortals, I mean, if they're just like the scum of the fucking earth, fine, but it... it yeah. Don't... Don't do that anymore. Don't. We're here, sir. Cool. Um, also, Bailey, one other thing. I need you to forget that you heard any of that. Bailey, of course, does not resist. And the last few minutes and the current moment are erased from his memory. Uh, Bailey, hey. Yeah, hey, we're here. Whoa. We are. That was fast. This is zoned out. It was weird. I was rambling on. I'm sorry. Uh, I got unusual requests this time. Sir. Uh, drop us. I need you to get out of here. Don't be around here. Sir, is that wise? Uh, not at all, but it's a little too dark out here, and weird things have been happening. Every time we come here, sir, something awful happens, and we need to get out fast. How will you, how will you do that? You know, I just sort of, like, look at his, like, presumably still bandaged arm, even though it's functioning. I'm like, you, you've, you've done enough. I'll call you when I'm ready. Mr. Campbell won't like it, sir. You, Mr. Campbell likes what I like. Yes, sir. You uh, go have some fun. Just keep your, phone, keep your phone nearby, though. Yes, sir. And get the hell out of here. Yep. And get out of the car. So. Needless to say, none of this is shared with the sisters, which is why we're going in the opposite, at this, the different entrance. From the SUV before Bailey leaves, you take the strong box, mm -hmm. contains the key. Nothing else? It's the Just standard, standard on-person effects. Ah, the flashlights. Ah, the mm -hmm. 4,000 lumen yeah. tactical flashlights that uh, Annabelle acquired through the magic of online ordering. And uh, is it safe to assume that you each take one? Well, yeah. yes. Two, if there's enough for me to, because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's I can't uh, do much have, down you here. You have seen what they can do. Yeah. Yeah. Very well. You are at the gas station, the edge of Griffith Park, not far from where Jasper's Haven's front door is, and waiting for the sisters. Just in case. It's, and I hand, I hand Eva the. Um, that knife that one of his men gave me. Yes. In case you need it. When Jasper walks away, I just lean in very close to Eva. I'm like, he didn't have a choice. I've seen it. He never had a choice. He had a choice to tell me. A moment later, a very familiar white <laughs> van pulls in to the gas station. Remind me to burn that van <laughs> down <laughs> into its fucking frame. I actually like the van over the limo. You would. The van crosses the parking lot and comes to a stop next to you. Oh. Hester cuts the motor and gets out from the driver's side. Are you vanishing? I'm vanishing. And what was the result I of your roll? I get hungrier. I'm at four hunger. You are now at four hunger. Ooh, this is going to be so cool. Oh, my God. A great I've night. Far too much of you lately. Oh, not enough. Not nearly enough. Is this the night we finally get to taste? Ooh. Who do you think? Come on. Mm -hmm. I got enough of her the other night. That was fantastic. I want more. <sighs> hey, it's the firebug. Let's eat her instead. 
preferable, but no. Won't be long now. <sighs> Just a little hungrier and you are mine. Kyoko also emerges from the van wearing her customary black jacket and her cool boots. Hey, gang. Hey, Kyoko. Whoa, long faces. Whoa, dude. You look like shit. I know. Do you never not look like shit? Thanks. Good to see you, though. Good to see you, too, Kyoko. Look, check that. Yeah. Is she talking to him even though he's invisible? So she's talking, but I can't see him, see her talking she, to She can see him. But now I know she can see him. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Kyoko? Yeah. Hester? Hester apparently cannot see you. Baron? Hester. Miss Griffith? Darling. Eva? Hello. And Jasper is here somewhere, otherwise yes. Kyoko wouldn't have spoken to him. She gives Kyoko a disapproving look as though they have talked about this many times before to absolutely no effect. Now remember when we first met. Uh, we left Violet Luna watching our haven. Fair. We have uh, been experiencing an infestation of black rabbits lately. Ah. Interesting. Unfortunate. Oh. You should Nothing have violent, just curiosity seekers. Right. Oh, I mean, if you need any help with your security. That is very kind. We might, hmm. in fact, need to take steps. However, we have also been visited by another friend of yours, a Miss Delilah, a thin blood, a ah. dustborn. Yes. Right, Delilah. She Interesting. has some pull in their community. She and hers are apparently keeping an eye on the streets of your valley for you. That was uh, the terms of our agreement. I'm glad to hear that she's making good on them. Well, how can we be of service, sister? Um, Where are we going? I'm going to do something for you two that I don't often do for people, which is let you into my house. Cool. Yeah. But remember when we first met? And I yeah. met you at the back of the van. Did the, sorry. And I asked you to be quiet. And then you weren't quiet. I need you to be quiet and follow me. Well, Kyoko follow me, Hester follow Kyoko. Whatevs. Um, be very careful where you step. I will let everyone know. It, also, don't feel bad, Hester. Huh? I, I can't see him either. Um, but I, I would like to impress upon you all. That last little bit of noise sort of set in motion a sequence of events that have kind of come real close to tearing the city apart at its foundations. So please, please listen to any and all instructions from our gracious host. I absolutely point in the wrong direction when I say that because I don't know where he is. There. Please listen to our gracious host. We will do our best. I'm sure you've heard about a power in Griffith Park as everybody seems to have heard nowadays. We are, of course, aware of the mystical resonances coming from this direction. However, since our sister resides there, we thought it polite not to pry. Well, we're going to show you why this power exists and where it exists. It is, in fact, where I live and what I live on top of that causes this power. Fascinating. Well, you can explain on the way. Yes. Let's go. So, through the chain link fence, down the river bank, to the concrete bed of the LA River, which flows very shallowly at this warmer time of year, to the door of Jasper's Haven. I do a different unlocking on the door. And you hear a <laughs> And I pry open the door. And there it is seems just... like an excellent place to pause our story.
Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle L.A. by Night, Season 3 Finale, Episode 9, Into the Night and the Dark. The door is open. As they enter the door, I basically am very conspicuously, like, touching people and standing in the doorway because I'm trying to make sure no one invisible is sneaking past us. You are attempting to interfere with the invisible ingress of unseen kindred, Mm -hmm. correct? Yes, and just even as people go by, it's very slight. Yeah, Hesper, Hesper, not happy about that. I'm sorry, it's got to be like this, yeah. Eyes open, everybody. We hmm. got invisible guests. Hmm. They, I will. Kyoko, is there anyone else here who is not supposed to be here? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, she waves at Jasper, but that's about it. We're all good, Big Daddy. I assume you see where the wards are. Yeah, be I, careful. You know. Didn't step on him. Follow her lead, please. Absolutely. <clears throat> Close up, I suppose. Um, I drop uh, obfuscation. So you become visible. Become visible. Everybody, let's get inside. So you enter and shut the door behind mm-hmm. you. So now we are in. Yeah, the other. There is just, this is a much sparser room than you saw before. And there is a, a closet on the left side that has some jackets and a hallway that just leads down to um, a hatch. In the this, this is it? This is where you, you get to see. Fine. Wow. Spartan. You know. Do I, I don't know. I expected, you know, like a big organ, like Dracula, dun, 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 and the library and statues. Look kind of like Wayne Manor, you know? <laughs> I'll we'll get you a bust that, like, flips open with a button in it. Like, I'll do that for you, dude. Maybe. Why would you want that? Anyway. Like Wayne Manor. Let's just go. Um, yeah. This is going to be weird. Cool. Do you know who M.C. Escher is? I know who he is. Why do you ask? Have you ever wanted to walk in one of his paintings? I would think that would be very disorienting. Be prepared to be disoriented. And I go towards the hatch. How lovely. So, you lead the way. I lead the way. The tunnels nearest Jasper's Haven are... Ordinary maintenance tunnels connected to the work that the city does along the L.A. River. Electrical conduits, natural gas pipes, junction boxes, utility storage, access ladders, cramped and twisted in places. Sometimes you have to bend double or squeeze through. So gross. But Mm -hmm. perfectly ordinary. And of course, clothing down here gets dirty fast. Doesn't tend to last very long either. Very difficult to maintain sartorial integrity in the subterranean places of the world. I'm sorry, I should have told you to prepare for filth. Yeah, this place is gross. Right? Dude, you creepy. I don't live in this part. Fair. Might not want to heighten your sense of smell. Wow, what is that? Are we going near sewers? Yes. I wish there were a way to, to dull it, actually. That's not, you never figured that out, Mm-mm. huh? They're like, no. Mm. The smell does get stronger as you pass by the tunnels that lead to the sewer systems and the, the malodorous reek is everywhere, crawling into your nose and dying there. It's thick enough to taste. It's very unpleasant. And this is where the rats and the cockroaches begin to appear. This is where the dingy water begins to drip from the massive concrete tubing. This is where you begin to see that strange gray moss clinging to some of the damp seams that connect one section to the next. 
Jasper leads you unerringly, though. He makes sure that you avoid the pools of stagnant, greasy water that contain who knows what depth of sinkholes. Down, down, and further still downward until you reach it. Now the four of you have all been here before. You know what to expect in the labyrinth, at least to a degree, but there is no way that the mind can prepare for or accept the alien otherworldliness of this place. Everything in your conscious mind tells you this is wrong, that this should not be possible, and yet here you are. Hester is struck silent as she enters the smooth stone construction. Kyoko, for once, has nothing to say. And she is visibly shaken as she steps around the yawning pits, eases around false doors, makes sure that she doesn't get near the pivoting ramps, the stairways to nowhere, the angles that don't behave the way they should. And the further you go, the more agitated she becomes. Hey. What the fuck? I know. Just follow me, you'll be fine. You said, what, what, Escher, this is like Lovecraft. Did you ever figure out how the lupine got down here? Nope. Lupine? Yeah. The shit. No. You don't, you don't have to whisper, Kyoko. Oh, I don't like this at all. Um, that just means you're still sane. There was once a lupine down here. Yes, he is gone. Rooms with hinges, but no doors, sit at the bottom of stairwells that should lead down, but lead up and end in blank walls, impossible angles, weird intersections, metal catwalks. Hester remains silent and grim. I'm leading them to the mirror. You are headed for the iron spiral staircase mm -hmm. that you know leads down to the chamber where the mirror is. Is there only one mirror? As far as I know. Hmm. Mm. Well, there's two, but only one that leads anywhere. The yeah, other one we, is where you end up. When we came out, but it was like just a mirror on the yeah. other side. Mm -hmm. Yes, is if you recall, finding the mirror is the only way to get through to the nexus point where the ley lines meet above the torpid Nosferatu. But the problem is once you get there, you can only get out through mundane passages which are impossible to find in the other direction. It's a one-way street. Mm. So without the mirror, there is no other way to gain access to that part of the labyrinth as far as you know. Uh, listen to me, you too. Who are, you talk, who are you talking uh, to? Kyoko and Hester. Yeah? What? <clears throat> this is a place... Yeah, of nightmares? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Don't ever go anywhere. Not with me. You think? I've spent a long time mapping very small parts of this place. Small parts? How big is it? I don't know. Holy shit. Now, I'm going to take you somewhere that's unpleasant. <laughs> I'm more unpleasant. We're going to a mirror. Awesome. And that mirror is a portal. And we're going to try something. And it will possibly change the destination of this portal, and we don't know where it goes. How do we get out of here? I can get us out of here. What if you screw with the portal, dealie, and you can't? We do live forever. That's a risk. Eva? Well, you said you wanted an adventure. Me and my big mouth. Eva and I have been here before. Crap. We've spent a lot of time here. You? 
No. no. I'm with Kyoko on that one. That's a... Hester places her hand on Kyoko's shoulder and pats her gently. And Kyoko calms down a bit. Okay, okay, so... The one we pass through this mirror. Mirror? Far. Yeah. It is oh. also a portal. It's going to feel bad. It feels like death. It feels like cold. It feels like nothing. And you just have to wait it out. Great. But congratulations, you will also know what it is like to fight a La Sombra. Okay, that sounds more interesting. It isn't. So, let's go have an adventure, huh? Yeah, okay. So you lead the way. Yeah. Down the smooth stone ramp that leads to the iron spiral staircase. And it's there you hear the voices. <sighs> From the bottom of the staircase in the room with the black mirror, you hear voices speaking to one another. The voices are not familiar to you. Okay, maybe we can move it. Maybe it's on hinges. I don't know. I'm not sure. No, I don't think that is what we should try. Maybe we should just go through it. I don't know. Well, let's send someone through. You are making a rouse check to use... Unseen passage. I'm good. I'm okay. <laughs> I forgot what hunger I was at for a second. Eva, what was your roll? I'm fine. Success. You both keep your beasts in check. Your hunger does not increase, Jasper. I'm going to remind you that you're at hunger for one. Yes, I'm aware. If you freak out, freak out on them. Yeah. Kyoko. Kyoko. Stay here. The voices are still speaking, but they're murmured. We will be back. They are murmuring, I should say, Nelly. In a moment. I'd like to activate heightened senses and... And here? Yeah. You can hear them perfectly. There are several individuals down there. You think at least three, possibly more. And they're all talking about what they should do. They are examining the black mirror and they are suggesting different courses of action. Move it, go through it, try to break it, go back, find help. They don't appear to be lost. They sound like they mean to be here, but they don't know what to do now that they are here. Um, the voices are male and female, as far as you can tell, both. But you don't hear any names spoken, and none of them sound familiar to you. Hmm. I would like to rouse the blood to increase my manipulation. <laughs> Make a rouse check. I succeed. Okay. So your manipulation increases, and then you do hear a familiar voice. Aurora's voice. And Aurora says, this is getting us nowhere. I am going through. Stealth, um, okay. which I assume versus kindred. So dexterity and stealth. Uh, that is five successes. Five successes. Are you descending the iron I'm descending stair? the iron stairs. Unseen and quiet. And can I take an essence of air potion? You consume the liquid. Mm -hmm. Mark one off. I believe you have one left. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll float down. You are going to float down. Victor remaining here. I unholster my weapon, but I do not move. Okay. Kyoko cracks her knuckles. Unlimbers her shoulders, gets ready. Hester merely waits, calm, collected. Take out my flashlight, kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So gun in one hand, flashlight in the other, but Rock I do not turn it on. pistol in one hand, yeah. <laughs> powerful flashlight in the other. Nelly, mm -hmm. you have your tactical flashlight as well. Yeah, and my, my dagger. And your dagger. So, Jasper, you are descending the iron stairway first. Yeah. You are silent and unseen. Now, there is some light here. They have brought 
what appear to be electric lanterns of the type that people, mortals, might use when camping. Yeah. There are several individuals here. You see Aurora standing. She is wearing a black tank top, cargo pants bloused into her boots. She is standing right next to the mirror and she has her hand in it, playing with the shadows. She's clearly very pleased, but also very impatient. The individual standing in front of the mirror, you don't recognize. He has a thick shock of reddish brown, wavy hair, mutton chops. He's wearing a somewhat old fashioned suit with a jacket that you think maybe is made out of tweed and a gold watch chain across his vest. Hanging back away from them are three other individuals. Two, you suspect maybe servitors, maybe ghouls, maybe younger kindred. You're not sure. They're both dressed in tactical gear and have automatic weapons. They don't appear to be prepared for much of anything. They look scared out of their minds. And the third figure is very familiar to you. Bald, pale, angular, wearing a distinctive red sport coat and red spectacles, straps. Now, I'm assuming you stop at the bottom of the stair before proceeding. Yes. I want to rem- remind you that this room is very cramped. It's a small chamber, maybe 12, 14, across, 14 feet across, barely big enough to hold the individuals that are in it in front of the mirror. Getting into a hand-to-hand combat here would be extraordinarily difficult in these cramped quarters. Eva, as you float down the center of the stairway, these are also the things that you can see as you emerge below. As soon as I see them, I'll back up out of view. Float back up? Just a little bit. I start backing back up the stairs. I, um, I head back up to where everybody's waiting. And I get right next to Victor. Victor. There are people down there. Does Aurora? It is a man with mutton chops and brown hair. It is two young vampires or possibly ghouls. And it is Strauss down at the bottom of that staircase. This is not a place we can be. We cannot take them. We need to go. All of us need to go now. You might as well join us, neonates. forever wasn't guaranteed. A drop unseen passage. <laughs> you let them see you? Yes. I follow behind her. Aurora stops playing with the shadows and adopts a very casual stance leaning up against the mirror with her shoulder. She watches you all very, very carefully. But for once, she says nothing. I'd like to flip my um, flashlight in front of her like so she sees that I have it and put it away. I still have the gun in one hand and the flashlight in the other, and I'm like, Mr. Strauss. The armed individuals with their submachine guns have come to attention, but... At Strauss's gesture, they don't raise them. Yeah, I am not pointing it. I'm holding my things, but I'm not pointing them. (sighs) Interesting running into you down here. Interesting, but not unexpected, Dionate. 
Baron Temple. It is good to see you again. I wish it were under uh, different circumstances, but yes. Miss Griffith, always a pleasure. Can't say the same. If my lady Seneschal knew that we were meeting, I am certain that she would wish me to convey her sincere and fond regards. How is she doing? She is, of course, very well indeed. Very busy with affairs of state, as you can imagine. She does, however, long for you to visit. Hmm. May I convey your respects to her? But of course. My dear. It has been too long. Not long enough. Mr. Strauss, um, I actually have an unusual request. Might you and I have a private word briefly? And I slowly put the gun away. I do not put this flashlight away. <laughs> I go and stand directly next to Eva, still invisible, but I'm right next to her. You look well, my dear. The years have been kind. What did you do to my ring? Your ring. He fishes in his pocket and pulls it out. I do not believe it is your ring. I believe you gave it to another. Is he with you? Now would be an excellent time for courtesy. <sighs> he throws the ring at you. I believe this belongs to you. Yes. Hello. I hardly recognized you without your party attire. It was a different look, wasn't it? It is. So here we all are. Here we all are. A word in private, away from your associates where absolutely anything could be said, where anything could be done to you. How brave, how courageous, how unwise. Dare I say, sir, uh, whatever you wish to do to me, you could do right here or in the next room. Very true. Hey, I don't, uh, Aurora, I know, Aurora. I don't believe I've made your acquaintance. And I point at the suited man. Mm. The suited man who has backed up several paces to get closer to the gentleman with the machine guns nods. You can call me Garrick. Garrick? Garrick. Baron Temple. Miss G. Nice suit. Thank you. Coming from you, that is a special compliment. The classics are classics for a reason. Really pleased to meet you, Miss Eva. Heard a lot about you. There's um, there's somebody in town I think who's going to want to talk to you. Strauss gives Garrick a sidelong look, clearly indicating that he should shut up. So, uh, nice mirror. I don't suppose you're going to tell us how it works. I don't suppose you need us to. I have some theories. What Which... would I know about such things? Mr. Jasper, none of us are stupid. No, we're not. Well, I'll let you guys all talk. 
<laughs> uh, there may be a way for everyone to get what they want here tonight. Or at least leave equally dissatisfied, but intact. Aurora stops leaning against the mirror and straightens up. She reaches out a pallid hand and strokes the black surface lovingly. Tendrils of the blackness curl around her finger as though responding to its own kind. You have no idea what you are dealing with here. I have theories. Hmm. You are all more interesting than I thought. I regret not beating this out of you. Had I known about it, I would have. You gave it your best shot. And you look disturbingly healthy, and yet... Mm. <sighs> it seems fair. You injured my brother with your pop gun. I wish I hadn't had to. He will heal, as will you. <laughs> and then we will all fight another. You find that amusing? Yes, we will all fight another day. This will not be the end for any of us. We're just all out for a stroll in a bizarre, non-Euclidean geometric wonder. Um, Mr. Jasper, I don't suppose you'd care to tell us who built us? Mm. Even if I did possess that information... You wouldn't tell us. Mm -hmm. As you said, none of us are stupid. There may be a way. There may be something that we can trade. Mr. Strauss, if we might have that word. Strauss indicates the corridor through which this chamber is reached, and he steps back into it several paces. Baron? Can I activate hide senses and listen in? I, again, keep one hand like fairly clear, and I do keep the other hand on the light, but down at my side. And I walk over towards Strauss. Baron Temple. Mr. Strauss, it, if I may. And I hold my coat out very slowly. And I pull a small notepad out in pencil. <laughs> and I flip it open. And I write down, I know the prince is unwell. And I know that risks us all. I would like to find a way for peace. And I turn and I show it to him. You never know how voices carry in these hallways. and You will find, Baron Temple, that peace, like truth, is difficult to discover in a society that is comfortable with lies. This does not mean that peace may not be achieved. Let us say, for the sake of this discussion, that I concur. What is your proposed course of action? Well, at this exact moment, I would like to have a more protracted conversation, but I dare say in this exact moment with these heightened emotions, this is probably not the time for such things. And yet, this may be the only such opportunity that you will have. I flip the notepad over, and I write again. I am curious to know why you do not wish your compatriots to be aware of what you are telling me. I do not wish your compatriots to be aware of what I'm telling you should, and I flip the page back over. Some things not be common knowledge, and I point at the prince's unwell. I believe, Mr. Temple, you will find 
no kindred unaware of this fact. Oh, well then fine. And I put the <laughs> notepad away. Being aware of a fact does not translate necessarily into action. I agree. I do not know you very well at all, sir, only by reputation. But I know you have not lived as long as you have and achieved what you have by being reckless or by being impulsive. I would like to find a way for you all to have your place where you can live in peace and for us to have our place where we can live in peace. Maybe in a few centuries we'll have all destroyed each other. But for the time being, just kind of let things cool down a bit. Because I fear those men and their guns and we have our guns and Eva is upset and Jasper and then things would just get messy and then... Has Miss Eva told you of our first meeting? I would love to hear it. I think it is a story she should tell at some convenient point. Hmm. However, I am certain that Miss Eva has told you that I will brook no foolishness. I don't believe she needed to tell me that, sir. We have met before. Let us suppose that a more calm resolution to current hostilities is preferable. Warfare of an opened and violent kind is both messy, expensive, and very distracting. Agreed on all points. Prince Vannevar is as you say, regrettably unwell. Yet he is Prince. It came to my attention that the Seneschal seemed to have a certain affinity for our Miss Griffith. I believe she's more than capable of representing us in our best interests if perhaps a communication between the two of them might be arranged. Seneschal Suzanne would undoubtedly find this a very agreeable proposal. Let us say it were to come to pass, Baron. you would be willing to abide by the outcome of that meeting? If you were to send Miss Griffith as your coterie's representative? I have trusted Miss Griffith with my previous life and this one on a number of occasions. And what of the Anarch movement in the City of Angels? Does she speak for them also? Leave that to me. You ask a great deal, Baron Temple. You have been fortunate and resourceful. You have been a very successful irritant. Were it not for the patronage of your friend, Miss Fiorenza, you would have already been swept from the board she seems to think that you will one night come around to our way of thinking. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Strauss that yes, Fiorenza is very wise and very smart. And if she and I can find a way to enjoy one another's friendship, then hey, maybe one day you and I will as well. Let us not get carried away, Baron Temple. It is at this moment that Aurora rolls her eyes and steps through the mirror. Motherfucker. 
Strauss size. La Sombra. Garrick puts his head in his hand. I suppose I have to go in now, too. Not the plan. In the interest of fairness, since my boss seems to want to keep talking to you all, does anybody want to go with me? Yes. I want to go with you. I mean, or Jasper, we could let them enjoy their evening and we could continue ours elsewhere. Yeah. We could. Kyoko isn't watching any of them at all. Kyoko is watching Eva really carefully. Hester remains calm. She seems unperturbed. She hasn't said anything. There is nothing that I can do. I'll do it. I'll go. Kyoko. I'll do it. You can't let him. He's got the... Just... Eva. Just... <sighs> this is Tremere shit. Right, Perrin? It is indeed. Which is exactly why I think maybe we should leave them to it. I think we should all leave them to it. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, how bad can it be? Right? <laughs> Come on, uh, Garrick, dude. She holds out her hand to Garrick. Kyoko, you don't have to. Be careful. Cool. She takes Garrick's hand. They look at each other. And together they step through the mirror. Well, Mr. Strauss, we will allow you to continue your exploration. I'm going to step in front of the mirror in his way. You're going to block Strauss? Yes. Why? Why are you here? That should be obvious. There is power here. We have sensed it ever since we came to this city, but we did not know where to look until now. This is not your home. This is, you have no right to be here. This labyrinth is not your home either. How dare you speak to me with such insolence? But it is my home. You I did not reside here? I do. And I did not invite you in. So you see you're trespassing. Do I take it, Mr. Jasper? that you claim domain in this place. I do. Were you a member of the Camarilla, I would, of course, acknowledge and respect your claim. But you have chosen pointedly to exclude yourself from our society. I have. Your claim of domain, then, means nothing. It means less. However, perhaps I can be persuaded. How so? Eva. What? 
You recall all the time we spent together. All those years. You know what I am. Yes. And you know what I will do. Yes. Then do not waste my time. What will happen when I destroy this mirror? I do not know. I have not destroyed anything like it, nor do I understand what it is to its fullest extent, but I do know that whatever this thing does, which I'm sure you've figured out by now, is connected to whatever place La Sombra draw their power from. Yes. So I don't know what will happen when you destroy it. I would prefer you not to. Because I have not finished learning what it is yet. And we seem to have a stalemate or impasse of a sort. But I cannot stop you from destroying it. No, you cannot. It would be a direct attack. Are you saying that you will attempt to stop me? I will tell you that it will not stop them from getting back. Where they've gone, you can only get there from this mirror, but you can find your way back through other places. It is two sets of one-way streets. So if you destroy this, What's on the other side will never be accessed again. <laughs> I see that you believe you speak the truth. That is what I believe, yes. We don't always know if what we perceive is true is actually true. And do I take it ever that you will attempt to stop me if I try to pass through the mirror? It, it's, it's not yours to go through. Mass dominate Jasper and Eva. They are kindred, and therefore, this will not be easy. First, make the rouse check. I pass. You don't get hungrier. What dominate power are you going to attempt to use on them? Mesmerism. Well, that would be your manipulation and dominate against their intelligence and resolve. They each roll separately. My command is, please step aside and let Strauss and his party pass. Does unswayable mind add to this? It definitely adds to it. Do you wish to risk hunger to increase any of your attributes before you roll? No, I'm not aware this is coming. No, your mind is automatically defending itself. Although you can spend willpower to re-roll if you want to, after the roll is made. Yes, I can I willpower. increase my resolve? Make a rouse check. Uh, I would I like pass. I would like to spend willpower. Okay, Eva first. Okay, sorry. So you made the rouse check and yeah. what happened? I pass. You pass. All right. And Jasper does not spend, does not risk the beast no. because you were at hunger four. Um, okay. You are spending willpower. Yes, please. To re-roll up to three regular dice. Yes, please. Seven total successes. Seven total. I'm gonna use a willpower to re-roll. 
How many dice? Up to three regular dice. No hunger dice can be re-rolled. Six. So again, my command was, please step aside and let Mr. Strauss and his group pass. You hear the words, and you feel the pressure against your minds and your wills. And yet, despite your misgivings, you do as your coterie mate requests and step aside. I have rationalized, so they feel like it makes sense. Mm. Well, they should feel like it makes sense. (laughs) It's unclear whether or not you are aware of what has happened. That is to say, it's unclear whether or not you are aware that Victor has chosen to force his will on you. Even if you come to this conclusion, it seems like the right thing to do. It makes sense. Why stand in his way? Why bother? Nelly, you are completely aware of what is happening. Mm -hmm. You have seen this more than once. Mm -hmm. What was the exact command? Uh, Please step out of the way and let Strauss and his group pass through them. All of that being said, We can't stop you from doing what you like. So please, go through. Strauss beckons to the two minions, nods, and steps through the mirror, followed by his retainers. The moment they're gone, I look at Jasper and I don't say anything, but I go. Yeah. Open the box, take the key, and I. Stick it into the slot. Stick it into the keyhole on the side of the frame. It fits. (laughs) There is no sound. Do you turn the key? I turn the key. The surface of the mirror begins to ripple like water into which a stone has been cast, radiating outward from a center point. And instead of a black, glossy surface, you see the nexus room where the ley lines meet, the sleeping Nosferatu on the slab. You see Aurora, Garrick, Strauss, Kyoko appears to be unconscious on the floor. Say the words. I pull out my notepad, and I recite the words. You speak them out loud? Yes. Multiple things happen at once. The first thing that happens is that there is a tremor in the walls of the labyrinth. The ground shakes, the walls tremble, the ceiling rumbles. Each of the individuals on the other side of the mirror feel it too. And they look around them, worried, concerned. Aurora laughs. You can't hear them, only see them. Garrick has his hands on the network, the lattice work of ley lines. He is clearly trying to figure out what to do. The surface of the mirror occludes again black glossy surface returns and then the view changes once more now you see the back door I touch the mirror You don't feel the cold. You don't feel that strange, disorienting sensation 
such as when you have passed through it before, you feel the cool rush of air of a much larger room and you can see your hand in the old slaughterhouse that is the back door. It is a direct route to that location. This will get us through to the back door, which you entered through the first time you were down here. This gets us out. What do we do about Kyoko? We'll have to get her back another time. We can't yeah, take Aurora like... and Strauss and Garrick and those people. We, there's nothing we can do right now. I could kill you right now. I'm aware. All right. If they wanted her dead, she'd be dead already. I can't believe I'm hearing this correctly. We're not leaving her there. I don't want to leave her there either. Well, then what is your plan? Then what do you suggest we do? Well, you're the experts here. You seem to know about this place. What's that room? Who is that Nosferatu sleeping? I What's going on? Him. That Nosferatu, I have no idea who he is. Two, that room is a nexus of ley lines that connect all throughout the city like a giant spider web, and they are figuring out exactly how those work right now. That is what I was taking there. You, I was eventually going to show you that room. Well, we can't allow them to do that. No. And yet but we... I cannot fight in my current condition. They are incredibly powerful. Yes, I am aware of who Maximilian Strauss is. I don't know who this Aurora is, but the way you speak she about her... She is the Scourge. Well, I know what a Scourge is, of course. But... She's a La Sombra Scourge. Ah. I see. Garrick, I believe, is also a Tremere, if I am not mistaken. Certainly seem to be. Yes, so Robert Garrick is known to me by reputation, although we've never met. <sighs> well. If we leave her there, you know what he'll do to her. Yeah. So. I'll go in and get her. How? There's a way. Can we trap them there? I know they have to take the long way out. Is there something we can do to reconfigure this place to keep them, like, stuck in a loop? Can't you just take the mirror away? Won't the key allow you to do that? Or something like that? I don't Could you just it. turn it off? We just found this key. Literally earlier this evening. I don't know what it does yet, and I don't know how to move this mirror. Just try Do it you again. Think that perhaps maybe it's connected to my family. Maybe if I were the one to turn it. We can try. Or if you're the one that says the words. Maybe. Try. Try. Do you read Latin? I read Spanish. I guess that works. I hand her the piece of paper. What are you going to try to do? I'm gonna turn the key and see if that changes anything. Well, don't, I mean, get her back. I mean, we're gonna go back there. We're gonna go get her. Okay. Okay. Let's see what happens. So, Nellie, you recite the Latin, though you do not understand the words themselves. Mm -mm. Not really very much like Spanish. Are you turning the key as well? I'm gonna leave at, at the same time. Make a roll. It is intelligence and occult for you, since you possess no blood sorcery and no powers of oblivion. Is there anything we can do to help the role? You have uh, any dots in occult? Yes. I do, and I mean, they have all the dots, but I do. Go ahead and add three dice to the roll for their assistance. And uh, back of the throat, the pronunciation is right. You heard him. Spend willpower. Yeah, I'm gonna spend a willpower. <laughs> Still three successes. Three successes. Unfortunately, nothing happens. Well, it doesn't look like it's connected to you. Nothing or nothing different? Nothing changes in the mirror. You still see the back door. Let me say this again. Okay. They have to exit via the back, is that correct? Yes. I assume that's how they're going to get out. Presumably. We that's can. how they go. Can't we get be there first and wait for them? Yes. We could. Yeah, but it's not going to be any different. It's still going to be Strauss and Aurora. If you can keep them busy for a bit, I can get her. We can't leave her behind. 
Okay. I, I agree. And let's keep them busy for a bit. We can we can better we can better plan instead of coming up on them. We can we can do an ambush. <sighs> the way out, the walk. I, we were lost when we got out, but I'd, let's assume they head out directly. How long does it take to get from there to the back door? Here's an alternate suggestion. I'll go through. Get her. And you either turn this thing off or get rid of it or destroy it or whatever you want to do. And they'll have to get themselves out somehow. Yes, but then just both of you are stuck over there then, with them. I told you there's a way to get her. We won't be stuck. Okay. You go through. You find her. You get her out of here. We'll try and disable this from this side. Let us know when you get out, please. Is there anything you want me to tell Violet? Well, if this doesn't work, tell her I never liked her driving. Good luck. Thank you. Um, I take one of the flashlights and I hand it to her. What's this? It might stop the shadows. Give you a second or two. On the lady in the black. Yeah. That's the, that's Aurora. That's Aurora. Hmm. It's not plan A, but it worked on a brother. Thank you. Thank you. Ready? Nope. Ready. Get the room back, if you would. Read the words and twist the key at the same time. The image swims, changes, and you are now looking at the Nexus room. It is... Same scene, but now Strauss and Aurora seem to be arguing heatedly. Mm -hmm. Derek has stopped trying to manipulate the ley lines, and you notice that both of his palms are creased with a bright red line. He has been burned. But as far as we can tell, the shadow defense mechanism they mentioned does not seem to be. It has not been activated. This would be your chance there, distracted. What did you do to make the shadows come? Um, Looks like we did exactly what Garrett just did. I moved the lines. Hester, when they touch the lines, it set off some defense. I don't know if- What was the defense mechanism? Shadow leaked from everywhere, much like what La Sombra do. Who was in the room with you? Just, just yourself? Just two. And that man on the slab. I theorize that had you had a member of Clan La Sombra with you, nothing would have happened. I... You the shadows probably, know their own. You are probably correct. So... But while they're distracted, I think you should go. I'm going now. Be Good prepared luck. to do something. Got it. Yeah, something. Hester steps through, and she is immediately, as you can see from your vantage point, inside the Nexus room. Aurora looks surprised, snarls, and lashes out with a whip-like shadow tendril against her. Give me Hester is moving across the floor. And all, all yeah. Strauss yeah. holds up his hand and is attempting to stop Aurora from doing anything. Aurora is paying no attention to Shining Strauss. Our lights. We all turn our lights on. <laughs> you shine your lights through the mirror yeah. <laughs> at Aurora. Yeah. She shouts. It's a shout of surprise and anger, but not of pain. The shadow tendril dissipates into a hundred fluttering little shadowlets and it vanishes. She steps backwards and throws up a hand over her eyes. Strauss lunges for Hester, misses by a hair's breadth. Well, let's see about the minions, the servitors. Again, you can hear nothing. It's like watching television without the sound. There's a burst of automatic weapons fire. And you can see that Hester has been hit several times. She goes down to one knee, but she has reached Kyoko. There's a flash of light-ish something. And they're both not there. Okay. They're gone. Strauss is walking straight for the mirror towards you. Oh. 
turn off the lights. Turn off the yeah. lights, and I try and get it to switch again. You start reciting the incantation. I recite the incantation. Mm-hmm. There's another spray of machine gun bullets flying out of the mirror into you. Apparently, they can see you as well. I think that happened. Mm-hmm. Now, I thought about it's this not clear who is in front of the mirror. So I'm going to roll randomly to see if any of you are struck by the machine gun Fair. bullets. I'll roll a hunger die for each of you. Failure means you're hit. Can I challenge with... Nelly and Eva are both struck. <laughs> can I challenge with uh, rapid reflexes and move back? Rapid reflexes, absolutely. You can spin out of the way, pirouette like a ballet dancer, and not be where the bullets are. Mm-hmm. So only Eva. Having for damage, because it's superficial, you take two superficial wounds. <sighs> uh, if... Mass dominate on the the young ones. Not Strauss, not Garrick, not Aurora. You're gonna try to, now, they do need to see you well, in you the see, eye. They, can they see me? They can see you. Oh. It's unclear whether or not they are looking at you in the face. They do need to see your eyes. So, what do you want to tell them? Protect me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <I'm all> right. <laughs> Also, my command is Jasper, do the thing. <laughs> Got to finish the presentation mm-hmm. first. I'm gonna spin one more willpower. Mm-hmm. Then I'll be out of the willpower business. And that was worth it. How many? Eight with a crit. Eight with a critical, but not a messy critical. No, crit crit. That is eight including the crit. One of the guards the servitors appears to be unaffected. The other one, however, immediately rushes forward and attempts to block Strauss from coming through the mirror. Now you've removed your flashlights, so Aurora is no longer affected by the bright lights. I'm finishing the incantation. You are finishing the incantation and turning the key. Mm -hmm. You see the back door. Everybody through. I don't know how to destroy this or stop this from working, but they can't get back through from there. So the best we can do is try and just get out of here. What happens when you take the key out? Are you going to be stuck in here by yourself? I don't know, but if there's any of us who's going to get stuck in here, it's best it's me. (sighs) I'll see you at the club. No, I'm leaving. (laughs) You two go. It's gun in the other hand and through. Nelly and Victor going through. Mm -hmm. So... There is no cold sensation, no shadow depth, no fear, no void. You're simply crossing a threshold from the antechamber to the ruined, disgusting, abandoned slaughterhouse that is the back door entrance. You are in the dark. It is empty. I text Bailey, need a pickup right now. We can't leave them. Nah, Jasper's right. They can make their own way out of there. Bailey calls you. I actually know the address of this place because I've been here before. So I tell them where we are. Mm -hmm. And then I start looking around for anything we can block the door with to, like, physically prevent it from opening. Well, as as you know, this is uh, an old meatpacking plant, and there is a tremendous amount of equipment, tools, storage crates, boxes. There's a lot of loose material that you could move to lock the boiler that is the fault door. What if Hester and Kyoko need to come out? Meanwhile, back in the labyrinth, I take the key out. Removing the key renders the mirror glossy, black, <sighs> opaque. They can't get back through this way, we know that. It's, sh- it is a, remember, it is a blank mirror on the other side. That has Somewhere. been your experience so far. Now, you don't know if using the incantation and the key has changed anything. I do not. So, provided that nothing has changed, you're correct. The mirror on the other side is now an ordinary mirror. Strauss, Garrick, Aurora, and their servitors 
need to take the long way around. But that being said, we should get out of here. You shouldn't try to destroy it or something. Do you know how to destroy it? I don't know, but we could try. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab... Does any... This is all made of stone or metal or... The mirror itself? Yeah. It's merely an ordinary wooden frame. It's large, of course. I don't want to break this thing. Um... Okay, I'm gonna rear back and I'm just going to try and punch my fist straight, using potence, punch my fist straight through the frame of the mirror, just try and shatter it. Through the wooden frame itself? Through the wooden frame itself. You're using supernatural strength Mm -hmm. to do this. Your fist connects with the frame. There's a loud crack. The wood splinters and begins to fall away in pieces. And the black, opaque, abyssal substance begins to leak out of the frame and into the air. The mirror is falling apart, and the room is getting darker. Let's go, shall we? Yeah. And I'm just, I don't activate obfuscation, I just head back up the stairs towards my haven. Back up the stairs and toward your haven. Behind you, in the antechamber, the frame has fallen apart and the blackness has begun to pool around the floor. There is no more mirror here now. I don't think that was a good idea. Let's go. Hmm? We're heading out. Do you communicate with anyone on your way? Does, do I have reception down here? (laughs) Once you get to one of the upper corridors, you will. We are, I text Victor, and I just, or the group chat, whatever's fastest, and I just say, we're on our way out. The mirror is broken. We don't know if it still can work in some capacity, but it is broken. I reply, I'll send the car. <laughs> Hester calls yourself. Yeah, I'm just moving stuff until Bailey gets there, basically. I'm like, are you okay? Are you out? Yes, I'm fine. I've got her. Good. Can you get to your van? Yes. Jasper and Ever on the way out. Can you scoop him up? Yes. Anything else? What happened? Oh, come back to the club. We'll all talk about it there. Meet you there. Same thing. Just keep just blocking stuff in front of the door until Bailey arrives. They're going to get out, but that's actually good because Strauss will send our message. We just need them to not get out while we're here. Okay. You okay? We'll talk later. (sighs) Never a dull moment. Nope. So, Jasper and Eva have to take the long walk back to the Haven. Do you check the gas station? No one has yet told you that Hester is waiting for you. Well, I have to go past there to get out of here anyway. It's true. It is on your way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I leave the hatch from the labyrinth to my actual haven, I make sure to lock it. Lock it behind you. Yeah. Very well. And then I head out. And, but I keep that passage the way it is. I'll make a note. And I, we head outside. Are you all right? Did you were hit? Are you okay? Fine. It's okay. nothing. Let's get back. Let's get out of here. We can deal with this later. Let's go. Hester and the van are waiting for you. Kyoko is stretched out in the back, clearly in torpor. Kyoko. She'll be all right. We know how to wake her, don't we, dear? Let's get in the van. Come on. I'm not even bothering to activate, and I just run towards the van. She waits for you to reach it, starts the engine, and you drive to the Maharani. Bailey picks you up, as promised. You go. And takes you home, too. I text Campbell on the way. I'm like, everybody on high alert, we might have visitors. 
Yes, sir. High alert. Okay. Oh, and expect a white van. Let them through. Yes, sir. White van. 10 4. What? I mean, I, it, now's the time. What? I heard what you said to Strauss about me talking to Suzanne. She'll listen to you. Yeah, well, that should have been my choice, not yours. I mean, you don't have to talk to her, but if you can get them to the table to negotiate on our behalf... No, but you used me as a pawn, Victor. I did not use you as a pawn. I used you as the queen. You will fight for all of us. I believe in you. Let's just go check on Kyoko and Ava and Jasper and Hester. It's a lot of people. It's just a lot, period. So, at the Maharaja, Maharani, when you regroup later. Did you say the mirror was destroyed? Like, destroyed, destroyed? Like, how? I punched it very, very hard. Huh. And, and what happened? The whole frame snapped. Mm. And it just blew, or is blah. It or... kind of fell out like liquid and hit the floor. I don't know if it means it's entirely useless. I just know that the mirror is broken, and I broke something that was very important to me, so I am very unhappy this evening. <sighs> yeah. How'd they even get in there? I don't know. We had warded the place. But seeing as Strauss was there... I'm sure he can see past and find a way past those words, no problem. Look, man, I don't run from anybody, you know that, but there's just, that was not the time to stand and fight and make the hero No, play. I understand. As much as I don't like it, I, you, you were correct. So, let's assume the worst. Let's assume they got it, they figured it out. Didn't look like they figured it out. Garrick was burned and they were arguing, but let's assume they figured it out. Worst case, they got the Nosferatu, they got the ley lines, what does that mean? How did they know that there was leaving ley lines? I don't know. You can s sense the power emanating. Other than, that. Other than that. Are you, you're hit, are you okay? Like, is, is, is Kyoko okay? Kyoko's Ky in Torpor. We know how to wake her. It'll be all right. Thank you, Esther. We didn't know we were bringing you all to that. Well, it was um, an experience. But yes, you appear to have larger problems, as do we all. Also, you guys can teleport? It's Tremere shit, man. Like, what can they not, not do? Not, 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 not in the way that you mean, and not easily, and not without a cost. And, um, well, Hester, another time. What can we do for you? We've put your your mates in, in danger. What, what we... What can we give oh, you? Oh, you don't owe us anything, Nelly. This is all part of the conflict now that we're all fighting. Mm. Well, thank you. Now, I'll do one more thing. Let's talk to Strauss. Now? Right now. Now is a good time. Let's talk to Strauss. She walks over to one of the bars in the Maharani, and she pours a carafe of water from one of the faucets. Steps over to you. Ready? Let's do it. She pours the water out on the dance floor. Grabs your wrist. Bites hers. And drips Vitae into the water where it splashes. You all move back. There is a diffused red glow in the air, as though blood were saturating the very oxygen around you. And in a moment, Strauss's face appears in the puddle of bloody water. Knock, knock. Ah, yes. I might have realized. Well, Miss Hester, Baron Temple. Mr. Strauss. Congratulations, Baron. A masterful stroke of tactical planning. 
I think you'll find the rest of your trip unimpeded. You should be able to find your way out the same way we did. Yes, we are out, thank you. I meant what I said in the tunnel. Miss Nelly should speak to Seneschal Suzanne. We have what we came for. Mm. I offer you a truce. If she's willing, I'll make sure that uh, I ask Nelly to do the same. No more blood needs to be spilled. I will guarantee no more attacks upon the Anarchs for the duration of this truce. I will guarantee it personally. I'll guarantee the same. Is Eva there with you? I don't know if Eva's made it back from the labyrinth yet. When you see her, tell her there is someone here in Los Angeles who longs to see her again. Mr. Garrick said something similar. Is there anything else I can tell? Because I think she might have already heard that message, sir. I dare say it is a private matter. I'm... I'm here. Hmm. She is here. My dear. Someone who desires greatly to speak with you will call upon you very soon. Miss Griffith, we look forward to your visit in the Camarilla Court of Los Angeles. I will personally guarantee your safety coming and going. Appreciate it. And now, if you will excuse me, I have business to attend to. Until next time, Mr. Strauss. Until next time, Baron Temple. The blood dissipates from the air and the water is merely water. And here is where we end, for now, our vampire story. <laughs> <laughs>